Uh, I saw something really interesting this week in the New York Times, and I think we have our guest on the phone. Is this Jan Stoller? This is Jan Stoller. How are you, Jan? Very well, thank you. Great. Thank you for well, thank inviting me on your show. Yeah, thank you for uh, thank you for coming. So, ladies and gentlemen, why is Jan on our show? And you know, we about two years ago we shifted, and I want to thank EarthCam for our live Times Square background. And, you know, we talk about, um, our, our tagline is, as local as it gets. And we try to always talk about topics about Manhattan. And we always have our live Times Square background. And we all know Times Square pretty intimately because we switch the cameras. When one doesn't work, we go to the other. And we know the camera guys behind there. And, uh, you know, we've all watched Times Square a lot. And it's sort of been the anchor of this show. And there was this article uh, in the New York Times that had these pictures about, quote, unquote, Times Square. And, um... Uh, these photographs that Jan Stoller took, and uh, we we uh, want to share them with you because they really tell a. Uh, well, why don't, Jan, why don't you tell us what they tell us? Actually, generally speaking, your your collection of of pictures of Times Square. Well, I guess I should start by saying that um, I went to Times Square with the intention of photographing uh, something other than people. I was interested in photographing that. Um, a fortune telling machine, which was at the 8th Avenue and 42nd Street exit stairs of um, the subway train. And when I got there and set up my tripod, those two thuggish looking characters wearing the gang colors demanded that I take their picture. And uh, so when sitting in front of my camera, which was on a tripod, um, they were now. Um, going to be um, propped and styled by me, and so I asked the guy to take off his jacket, blue jean jacket with the gang colors, and I asked him to put it on my shoulder, and then I had to kind of spread it out so you could see the logo. I think it's this one down here. Yeah, I'm trying to, no, it's not this one. Keep going. We're trying to scroll up the picture. This next one. The, this, this, these two guys, I think, right? It's standing in front of the, the kind of the, the gypsy window, the lady. Yes. She's selling, yeah. and, you know, take me out of the picture because you guys can see it says 10 cents here. She has your lucky, what, what year was this? Well, it's 1980. 1980. So tell us, you came upon these guys and they demanded you take their picture? Yeah, well, they saw me setting up the camera and they said, take the picture. And I said, all right. And so I um, arranged them, them in the frame that way. So I wanted to show the, the machine and... Uh, to get the guys to pose within my uh, finder, my viewfinder of the camera. And uh, once uh, people saw this going on, people wanted to know what was going on, and and other kids and young people were asking me to take their picture as well. So um, I took some of them out on the street and uh, made the other photographs over time. Uh, I went there um, days after days, um, because there was only a, maybe an hour of good light up there because I was waiting till the sun was setting pretty low in the sky over the Port Authority building. And, and when it's that low, uh, you don't get these harsh shadows in the eyes, and the light is somewhat softer just because it's filtered through the atmosphere. And then at a certain point, it sets beyond the, behind the Port Authority building, and it was too dark to make photos. So I come back to another day. So they're fascinating. We're, we're, we're doing like a, a slideshow through them. They're mostly people of color. Is that um, reminiscent of the 1980s uh, for Times Square? Well, it was, yeah. It certainly wasn't the middle American tourist attraction that it is now. In fact, worldwide tourist attraction uh, um, from all over the place. So uh, you know, back then, yeah. New York was considered to be a dangerous place. And um, I would say that uh, so-called polite company, if they got out on 42nd Street, carried on to whatever purpose they had there. And uh, the people that were in these photographs tended to, uh, to go there to look for their own kind and to, to spend the day together um, doing whatever they were doing. It wasn't something I was really aware of what they were doing because um, they were only... Uh, encounters in front of the camera and, and then they went on their way as did I. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking because um, they 
everybody looks like well, occasionally a guy uh, drinking a, a, something in a, in a bottle, but um, they all look like they're passing through, going somewhere, or they've got like this lady with a child. I mean, it looks like you know Times Square had much more to it than what people think from back then. I mean, we've got the uh, the big uh, um, music boxes, etc. But you know, these people all look pretty um, respectable and uh, hardworking and passing through and doing normal things. And um, maybe Times Square had a bad rap. Well, uh, again, I think that this is not uh, white New York that uh, Giuliani uh, rejiggered Times Square to cater to. Uh, this was ethnic people and I think they came to Times Square for the various attractions there before movie theaters and uh, there were a few bars there, some restaurants and uh, there were martial arts shops and uh, hat stores and it was um, yeah, a place to to go for the afternoon I think yeah Amazing so um, it really was a crossroads, and I guess they didn't have the pedestrian plaza, so it was straight 7th Avenue, Broadway, right cut through there, so it was traffic crashing through there all the time, so it was a much more of a kind of a market feel, like a hustle bustle? Oh. Yeah, well this area here was the western side of Times Square, it was really by the Port Authority station. I didn't photograph over by... Times Square because the light wasn't as good. Got it, of course. So this is sort of like where one Times Square is in those places, I see. Well, this is very interesting. I mean, it's very, um, our, our city has changed a lot, you know. People look very analog and very real and doing real things and going to work and having a beer and sitting on the sidewalk and talking to friends and holding their baby. And, you know, today we kind of just go from point A to point B so quickly. I guess, um, have you made any observations? I mean, I guess you go back to Times Square a lot, uh, of the, the feeling of the difference, and what was sort of your experience, and what was your big learning out of doing this, and why did you do it? Well, as I said, these people confronted me, and once I made this kind of contact, because uh, I wasn't photographing people at the time, I was doing some photographs of, of uh, derelict parts of Manhattan, and what attracted me to that particular site was that machine, and there was also um, some shops that were below ground that uh, were in the subway area. There was a shoe repair shop, and these things were kind of redolent of another era, um, and you can find very few snippets of that kind of experience in the city now, but there was that architecture and businesses that probably were built from the first part of the 20th century and they were slowly being erased, but there's still a good deal of that between them. Um, call from unknown caller. I have this caller. He called those. So that, that's what attracted me. Okay. How are you? I'm good. So you have a quick question for our, for our guest? Yeah, I want to talk about the juice. The 40 second is not the same. It sucks. It's safe. Yeah, forty second uh, now. You don't like you don't like Times Square now. So you re well, I go there back when? Yeah, you got to turn the TV down. You have, you have to turn your TV down, sir. Okay, I'll turn it up. Okay, give me one second. All right. Okay, now when I was a young kid, I used to shine shoes right across the street on Forty Fifth. I had peep shows, there a lot of different people, there was a lot of movement on 42nd Street. Now it's a tourist dump. People come from all over the world to see what it used to, they, they want to see what it used to look at, not what it looks like now. The people is different, the stores are different, I know it's about change. But people used to come from all over the place to hang out on 42nd Street to see the peep shows, the movies, the flying through the places. People had somewhere to go now. It's just tourist, tourist shops. So where would you say the people were from back in those days? They were more local, right? Okay, again, I'm sorry I can't hear you. Oh, I would ask that 
call, it were the people from local that came in by subway, right? They didn't come. They came in by everybody came from the Bronx. They came from Brooklyn. They came from Queens. They came from Jersey. They came to Manhattan. They came to Forty Second Street. They took the trains here. It was a big thing. You had all the movie theaters. It was something to look forward to coming to the street to hang out. And there's a lot of clubs in the city back then. They had Studio 54. They had Xenon. They had the Red Carrot. They had a lot of these clubs now. Now you have very, very few clubs. You have a lot of tourist places now. Yeah, and coffee shops. And they had coffee shops, uh, CBS and Dreamweed. And, uh, you know, it. it, it, it 42nd has changed a great deal. Great. I mean, it's good, but it's bad in one way. His people used to come and spend money to come to 42nd to see how it looked. All right, they do now, but it's not the same people. Yeah. If you if you guys are New Yorkers, you know what I'm saying. You know, the people are different now. Yeah. Tourists. Tourists. So, do you recognize any people from those photographs when you're working there? So, I'm sorry. The photographs, do you recognize any of those people? No, well, more, I, 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 I recognize because I like taking pictures myself, and, and I notice that the people, you got to realize, New York went to a different state. A lot of people are probably dead, had the virus. A lot of people got sick. New York went to a lot of states, the dope, the crack, disco era. Now we have a, we're in a different phase of, of, of you know, the transition. New York is going through a transition, man. You know, you know it. Here in New York, it, 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 it's, it's the, big, the birthplace of the, of the world. People are dying. In 40 seconds, you look at it now. Turn around and look how, how empty it is. Before there was there was movement. Now, now. Not the same anymore. It's, it's uh, what you call it, it, it uh... New York is a police state now, kid. Well, it's a, it's a surveillance state, state, yeah, that's for sure. But we're all watching the wrong uh, thing, I mean, so... First time I'm really watching this show, and I'm very interested, because I'm a New Yorker. All the, I'm a New Yorker. Yeah, we try I'm to stick to that. I was raised and born in New York, and New York is changing so fast, so much. Yeah, so much so fast. I mean, I walk through Times Square almost every day, and I have skipped it for about uh, four weeks, because... My son has me going to another gym, so I went back to the old gym today in the Crown Plaza and walked through Times Square. And just in these four well, weeks, uh, it's changed. Let me ask you a question. I'm really sorry for interrupting me. you. You work out? Yeah, every day. My son's a bodybuilder, so I meet him in six fifteen, and we go to work at the gym five days a week. It's crazy. Okay, well, I'm gonna, I didn't want to say that over the telephone, okay? But I'm a three-time New York Golden Gloves champion. Oh, look at that! Amazing. All right, so I know I know about New York. I, I was with Mark Brennan on the USA boxing team. I won a Bronx medal for Puerto Rico in the World Cup. And my big thing is with New York is I have a, a, a thing with I never finished school. And that's a big thing for people. You know, school is a big thing now. Kids got to realize is your school is a school is a very important thing for a lot of people, especially for the young kids now. So that would be your Very advice. Important. Very cool. Well, listen, we're going to let you go. We really thank you for calling in and sharing your experience at Times Square. And obviously, it meant a lot to you. And these pictures really, you know, inspired well, you to I, speak. I, so. I, I, I want to give you some. I want to give you some praise on your pictures. I, I think they're really, they're really New York. And just keep showing them, and I keep calling my name. I'm not going to tell you my name. Okay, no, my friend. My name is Michael. Okay, Michael. Thanks for calling. Yeah. All right. But, but you, but you can call me. Champ. Champ. All right, Champ. Thanks for calling. All right, and and the pictures belong right, to Jan. And, and keep keep up the good work with this. Listen, I give you some more advice. The more you show New York how it used to be, I bet you get more people looking at you. So. All right, my friend. Because we need we need that. We need more New York showing more New York things. Central Park, Broadway, how it used to be. People don't want to see how that shit looks now. Well, Jan Stoller takes pictures of New York, so he's a photographer. So check out his site here if you get the chance, janstoller.net. And, you know, he's got okay, beautiful... For, he, he, for, he, for you, though, put some more on the, uh, about New York on your, on your show and I, you'll get more people watching. I'll do that too, sir. Thanks so much, okay? Thank you very much. Yeah, you take care. Wow, Jan, you really, uh, you, your pictures, you know, we just put them up in one slideshow, maybe two seconds each. 
And it got this guy to call with his responsive cord from what a view. So, um, Jan, I want to thank you very much for joining us, okay? We're going to let you go. We really enjoyed the, uh, the slideshow. And, and, um, Thanks for inviting me, and uh, keep on doing what you're doing. Yeah, and thank you so much for doing what you're doing. Again, I encourage anyone who loves New York to go check out Jan's site here and take a look at his pictures. They're beautiful. All right, peace, love. Thanks, Jan. Take care. Bye.